Uh, it's a pleasure to be at this uh, WomenX event, being the only man to present on a women platform. And um, I've been asked to present on can a Nigerian man be a feminist? So my first question is to ask the audience, what do you think? If you think that a Nigerian man can be a feminist, say hi. It's only the women that are speaking. Where are the men? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, can a Nigerian man be a feminist? Next slide. And so, like uh, has been mentioned, does how we raise boys contribute to if they can be a feminist? And I think the answer is yes. Um, I grew up in a small um, family of four. These are my siblings. Can you spot me? I'm the last guy on the, on the far side. And so we grew up in this family, and I thought that everybody doing every chore in the house is normal to every household. I didn't know that it was not the same until I got into the university. The way my mom works is she's like a um, military general. She does a timetable. This week, you are doing dishes. Next week, you are cooking. The following week, you are washing the cars. So everybody knows what to do. And she would say, if you like, burn the rice, we'll heat it together. And so we all learned to cook. I didn't like to cook that much, but I learned to cook. At age 11 or 12, I could do amala, and it has what we call cocoa inside because I didn't do it well. Uh, but we all learned to do all the, all the household chores. And I think it's always important that when we are raising boys and when we are raising children, we should not only concentrate on the girls, but also put attention on the, on the boys. Learning to do also chores, learning to cook, they are survival skills for everybody, especially these days where you have a lot of young Nigerian students going uh, to study abroad and live in other countries. They discover that if you use your small pocket money from Nigeria, which the pricing from Naira to dollar is changing very rapidly every day, if you want to use that to depend on fast food, your pocket money is going to run out very quickly. So you need to learn how to cook, and it's a very important survival skill for everyone. Next slide. So as part of my presentation, I'm going to be talking about six little steps that I think that every man in Nigeria can make that can yield to big differences in the way that we honor and respect women in our community. I'll go to the first one. The first one is called mansplaining. Can everybody say mansplaining? A lot of men don't know that they mansplain. What is mansplain? Mansplain is when you have a group of people, maybe you're in a meeting, and a woman makes a contribution. And the men in the room feel that the contribution of the woman has not been well heard. So they then go back and re-explain what she has said. Many women face this, especially in technical roles. If you speak to women in IT, for instance, their male colleagues feel they don't understand IT because simply they are women. If you meet women who are architects, uh, their male colleagues feel they don't understand the technical terms of drawing simply because um, they, are, they are women. I also find this also in the medical field. So there's a lot of mansplaining going on. So check yourself as a man. If you feel you have to re-explain a point that a woman has made, also in politics, men feel that women don't understand politics. So if a woman makes a point about PDP and ABC, they say, what do you know? Do you read the news? Do you follow the news? Let me explain to you. That is not how it works. But there is also diversity. Even if we watch the same news and we listen to the same source of stories, we all understand it differently and we all have different opinions that we bring into the room. Next point. The next point is acknowledgement. And this is something that I have seen very common in this city in Abuja. Um, the last place that I see that it happened, I went to a restaurant to have dinner with my wife. And when we were to pay, my wife brought out her card, gave it to the uh, waiter to make payment. The waiter slotted in the card, punched in the figures, and passed the machine to me to put in my password. And I'm like, why are you giving me the machine? The, mach the card is not mine. Someone gave you the card, but you're giving the machine to someone else to make payment. And we see it is quite subtle. You might not notice, but it's something that we see in our everyday communication. Pay attention, men. When you arrive at an occasion with women, many times the security guard only greets the men. They say, chairman, you're welcome, sir. They ignore the women. Because silently, they are saying, power resides with the man. They are saying, this is the man that can give me a tip. When you park your cars, they salute you. They ignore the woman. 
They are saying power resides with the man. And when you keep silent, you are acknowledging that. You need to learn to acknowledge and tell them, there are two of us here. You can also say hello to the woman. And that's how to ensure that we share power with the women in our lives. Next point. This one is about sharing the Lord. And I think that as men, if you grow up in, an, in Nigeria or in many African society, they teach us that your number one responsibility is to provide for your family. And that has been ingrained in our lives from when we were very young. And so to be a man is connected to responsibility and is connected to your financial power, ability to provide and put money on the table. So many men feel that as long as they put money on the table, our work is done. Yes? No. Your work is not done. Your work is just starting. These days, we need to also realize that unpaid labor, work at home, domestic work, takes a lot of time. And if you put money on the table, but someone else is doing that unpaid work, they're making a sacrifice. It means they can't advance in their career if they have to cook, clean, do the dishes, take care of the kids. You put money on the table, but you have a lot of free time to network, go out at night, hang out with friends, do online courses. Your career will advance. You make more money, but someone else is making that sacrifice for your career to advance. In order for you to balance and allow the women in your lives also live their dreams and advance in their careers, you must learn to share the load at home. Meaning, you have to learn to drop your kids in school, pick them up from the daycare, stay at home with them, learn to do the homework with them, do the dishes, learn how to cook in order to balance the load at home. And this is also one of the ways where men can take responsibility and show leadership in their home. Next slide. And before I come to this next slide, and I must say that, like I said earlier, I don't think that many men in Nigeria, this comes very easy for them, sharing the load. It's something that we need to learn. And I will use myself as an example. When I got married, I tried to share the load. But I always thought to myself that I was doing my wife a favor. So when I do the dishes at night when she's asleep, I would expect her to wake up in the morning, check the kitchen, see that it's speak and span, and say thank you to me. Sometimes she says thank you. The times she doesn't say thank you, I get annoyed. I'll be like, ah, didn't she notice that I washed all the place and cleared the pots? And then one day I talked to her, like, you didn't notice that for the past five days I've been doing the dishes. I've been helping you. Then she said to me, you're not helping me. We used to place together. And then it occurred to me that even despite the fact that I thought that I was a modern man and that I was supporting women, my orientation about how I was providing this support was different. We need to learn to share the load, the responsibilities it has to share. Thank you. The next point is about zero tolerance to all forms of violence. And I will say that many, women, many men would say, no, I don't abuse women, I don't beat women, I don't slap women, so it's fine. It's not enough. Zero tolerance means that when we recognize anybody within our network, our friends, who are practicing any form of abuse, we need to say no to it, and we need to let them know it's not all right, and we won't accept it. Men, as part of our socialization, when we gather, you hear all kinds of jokes, people share experience, how they've dealt with this woman, what they've done here, and that's taking advantage of these women. We need to learn to say no. So it's not just enough that you don't abuse women. You need to let the people around you, other men know that this is something that is no longer acceptable in 2022. Next slide. And I think that this is a point that has been uh, mentioned by other speakers, especially by the last speaker who spoke a lot about promoting women businesses and talked about collaboration. We also need to promote women premiums. And I feel that this is a point that has been said in too many meeting rooms. But as organizations and as institutions, we need to ask ourselves, and I'm also speaking to the international institutions here, you need to ask yourself, the vendors that we work with, how many women led businesses run those vendors? If you do not look for them, you might not find them. Because sometimes the criteria you have set in your organizations are too high for the women-led businesses that you want to support to meet. So you need to meet them at the point of their need and ask them, how can we support you? How can we deliberately look for women-led business to register 
as business owners, as vendors in our company, in our institution, and give them jobs. Like Rinsala said, it's not enough to mentor women. Women have been mentored. Let's learn to put resources into their hands. Money, funding, financing, opportunity for them to bid and compete for these businesses. Even if it means for you to gather and teach them how to bid for your institution and for your organization, it's very important that we put resources into the hands of women-led businesses and organizations in order for their ideas to grow and foster. We also need to support women in leadership, and I'm happy that Rachel has spoke very passionately about the stark statistics in Nigeria on women's representation. And I tell people, people say, where are the women? Why are they not running? But when they run, we say, ah, they are not in on the popular party. They are not here, they are not there. We need to learn to support the women who have come out to run. They face so many challenges. It's very difficult. The architecture of politics in Nigeria has been designed to favor men. Many times in politics, when they gather to make decisions, 90% of those who are gathered are men. And therefore, when they are recommending people, they are recommending people in their network, people who can scratch their back and rub their shoulders, and they are recommending other men. We need to expand this space, and we need to find opportunities to support women in leadership. And not just in politics alone, but even in our institutions. If you run a business, you should ask yourself, are you creating space for women to grow up on the career ladder in your organization? How many women are in management position? A lot of companies will tell you, we have 50-50 gender parity in our organization. But many times, the majority of the women are in the lower cadre. They are the cleaners, they are the cooks, and all of that. We need to promote women and ensure that there are sustainability path for women to climb the career path in the organization. And also tied to this, many women sacrifice their career when they go to deliver a baby. You need to ensure that as part of policies in your organization, women don't lose on their career path when they go to give birth and they're able to come back, sustain their position, and also advance to growth. And that would be my final point. I would like to say that if men and all the men who hold leadership positions in homes, in families, as students, if you practice any of all of these steps that I've said to you, you're on your way to becoming a feminist. Thank you.